The Xbox Series X is the world's most powerful console. A statement you don't often hear Xbox repeating in marketing. In 2023, we are moving into a full new generation of games that will only release on the Xbox Series and PS5 consoles. But many development processes and design decisions are rooted in past generation. Xbox has a major problem with game performance, next generation features largely ignored, and a mindset that the full power of the Xbox is not being fully realized. The Xbox Series S and X consoles are considered full RDNA 2 with all of the modern feature sets in hardware and software solutions that combined can give well over a 30% boost in performance over the PS5, which some experts have dubbed an RDNA 1.5 system. A couple of key ingredients in the modern AMD hardware are Tier 2 VRS, an efficiency feature, and mesh shaders, a way to build 3D models in real time in-game on Xbox Series consoles. We'll get into the explanation of each of these two RDNA 2 features in just a moment. Tech experts and developers have spoken up about the express advantage that the Xbox Series RDNA 2 chipset has over the competition and the performance gap can be closed with the use of these features and an insight into how developers may choose to skip the proprietary hardware and software solutions that Xbox waited to implement into the Xbox Series S and X. First, let's talk about VRS or variable rate shading. VRS increases rendering performance and quality by varying the shading rate for different areas of the frame in view while playing games. This will essentially lower the quality of objects that are beyond view or outside the frame to return more overhead rendering budget and increase quality where it matters most. This is important. Tech experts working closely with Xbox hardware stated, there's a third tier which includes Xbox-specific VRS Centroid offset extensions dubbed TRX 2.X, used for Tier 2 VRS and temporal anti-aliasing. The software implementation on PS5 cannot make up for the lack of hardware support. You'll pay extra penalties that Xbox does not. More importantly, you can specify shading rates per pixel instead of per draw call. This effectively enables variable rate, MSAA, and more aggressive core shading while simultaneously increasing image quality. Put plainly, the Xbox can improve image quality while boosting performance and keeping the draw call frame rate target at 60 or 120 FPS, making concessions in image quality where the player isn't looking. Yes, it just depends on how the titles use them, the developer goes on to say. Like everything, there are multiple ways to solve similar problems. In some cases, a developer will build a generalized solution, which works great across devices, software-based VRS, and in other cases, developers will take full advantage of the unique capabilities that a platform will give them like hardware-based VRS on Xbox Series S and X. Mesh Shaders, another RDNA 2 feature, is similar. It is already on the Xbox custom SoC, but thanks to Sony parity, it is almost not gaining momentum. Absolutely, the parity also means it's locked to other features." Close quote. The parity that this developer speaks of is the path of least resistance, where game developers will opt to use software-based VRS instead of hardware-based, which is much more performant, because the PS5 doesn't have it. Another major hurdle going into next-gen only titles is the Unreal Engine approach to building 3D geometry. This is the battle for primitive shaders on PS5, which is software-based solution for their geometry engine, and the mesh shaders, a hardware solution which is far better for game rendering only available on Xbox Series consoles and PC. Let's talk about one of the more performant rendering features that is hardware dependent on AMD PC and Xbox Series consoles, mesh shaders. Mesh Shaders is a DirectX 2 Ultimate Vulkan extension. This is really the future of geometry pipeline by reducing the linear pipeline concept. In early 2020, DirectX 12 Ultimate included Mesh Shaders and implemented them into the Xbox Series S and X. Mesh Shaders will expand the capability and performance of the geometry pipeline. Mesh Shaders incorporate the features of vertex and geometry shading into a single shader stage through batch processing of primitive and vertices data before the rasterizer. The shaders are also capable of amplifying and culling geometry. All of this technical jargon is explaining the 3D geometry rendering that is pulled into raster or the actual visual picture 
pixels you'll see on screen in real time while you're playing. It goes on to say the mesh shader output triangles that go into the rasterizer is a set of threads and it's up to the developer for how they work. And the Xbox has an advantage in their simultaneous multi-thread cores. But as we get out of cross-generation, there is the Unreal Engine Nanite, which has become a new solution for building 3D geometry in the PS5 or even the Xbox Series S and X. Epic developed a mesh shader demo for the PS5 called Nanite Virtualized Micro Polygon Geometry, which is a software-based solution that is supposed to emulate what mesh shaders do, and it generates 20 million triangles. Developers say mesh shaders still use the fixed function rasterizer, much like the other hardware accelerated graphic pipelines do. Nanite has two different paths for rendering compressed geometry. There's a compute shader rasterizer for rendering dense micro polygon meshes, and in another path, they can use the traditional graphics pipeline that involves a vertex shaders with fixed function rasterization for larger triangles. Ah, that makes so much sense. On PS5, they actually do use primitive shaders for larger triangles instead of a vertex shader, but they still use a compute shader as well to do software rasterization. I guess you could use mesh shaders instead of vertex shaders, they say, if they really wanted to, but there'd be no advantages as the meshes get more dense since the software rasterizer would start to overtake it in performance. Plainly put, the real performant option is to use hardware-based mesh shaders which are available in the Xbox Series S and X. The problem is that the PS5 cannot render them unless they emulate it through Unreal Engine 5 and not all games will run on that engine. So why would a major multi-platform developer like Respawn build mesh shader geometry into their game when the PS5 needs an alternative software-based solution to draw triangulated shapes for in-world objects? The path of least resistance is to use a fix-all for both major consoles and optimize rendering separately. Of course, Xbox's first-party titles on Unreal Engine 5 and other major game engines will use mesh shaders and Tier 2 VRS. In fact, this is likely why Forza Motorsport on Xbox Series consoles is able to offer this level of visual quality with real-time reflections and shadows with DXR, DirectX ray tracing, in-game targeting 60 FPS. The comparisons for big multiplats on PS5 and Xbox Series X will always be there from channels like Digital Foundry. The development kit and procedures for porting games to Xbox Series consoles are up to speed and no longer the issue hampering performance. Digital Foundry explains that even though the Xbox Series X is more powerful than the PS5, they are rightly confused as to why the PS5 outperforms in frame rate graphs to similarly spec PCs and the Xbox Series X. Mm. Um, I've actually asked various developers about this, and they've been somewhat baffled by the situation. Uh, and it has been suggested that perhaps, like, one hypothesis is that with the PS5 having its own unique API, whereas Xbox is basically built around DirectX 12, that it might vary depending on which team members are assigned to do which version and there does still seem to be a preference for the ps5's api mm. it is a little bit confusing because even in like uh callisto protocol that changed a lot you remember the pre-release version that i first looked at was running like sub 20 fps on xbox and then they fixed that for launch but then it was still missing rt reflections and then they added rt reflections but they were like much lower resolution than ps5 when you look at the actual hardware, uh, that shouldn't be the case, right? Like no. it doesn't it doesn't make sense. Specifically with ray tracing, you would expect the um, the larger GPU on the Series X to actually exactly. do better. Yeah, right? and it's mainly like we got to get this out for a certain date, and based upon the fact that every game is patched into oblivion these days, as soon as it's launching, or just before launching, or after launching, um, that we know that games all come in hot and. There's priorities for ones that have a lot more cell date, for for sure. Um, but I think uh, the two-edged sword of Xbox, since Xbox One at least has been, is that it is a DirectX-based system. From looking at developer um, documents, almost essentially, we know that you can run basic DXR 1.0 or DXR 1.1 code on an Xbox. So if you just throw like a DXR 1.0 version of the ray tracing onto Xbox Series X, but for PS5, 
actually instead, due to the fact that it has a different API in total, do the low level work that is required right. to even get it running there. Well, then you're going to have two very different scenarios where one where you invested a bunch of work and one where you actually almost just ported PC code over there with not much difference. And one will obviously run better than the other because sure, there yeah. was more time given to it. One last explanation comes from the perspective of Xbox supporting developers to make the most out of the Xbox Series consoles on games that would release everywhere. The primary challenge is that Xbox hardware team can't force developers to use their support. There could be many reasons why, including developers unable or unwilling to take the feedback, or help being requested too late in their development cycle, teams not implementing recommendations, last minute feature additions or changes that can introduce issues just before launch. But there is definitely an issue of parity as major multi-platform games will choose to skip rendering and performance hardware features that the PS5 does not have, but are available on modern PCs and Xbox Series S and X. Some of these APIs or hardware software solutions are specific to Xbox, Microsoft, and PS5 has an alternative solution for rendering or compression of huge data processed in real time for their games. This doesn't even cover the compression and input output advantages that are exclusive to Xbox Series consoles that will be covered in another video. Alex Battaglia of Digital Foundry explained, quote, the truth is in the pudding of the performance numbers. If a game has wonky performance on a modern console, it was not given proper time. The PS5 and Xbox Series X are similarly good. The amount of time given to each is obviously not equal. Xbox hardware teams partner as closely with all developers on the platform, but every title, developer, and relationship is different. But the bottom line is that games, like Digital Foundry explained, are lucky to make the shipping date at all and come with an onslaught of post-launch patches. And if more time is spent optimizing the PS5 version over PC and Xbox, these issues will persist. And with DX12 versus Vulkan API battling out preferential treatment, the PS5, although less powerful, will get much needed optimization to keep frame rates and features where devs hope they would be. The problem isn't marketing or a number of more popular PS5s being preferential. It really boils down to the major issue with DX12 and specific features that the other console doesn't have. In the end, none of this matters to gamers enjoying games on whichever console they choose until they do the inevitable and look at the analysis long after they've already chosen their console and already paid for the game. This is Cold Eastwood and welcome to the redone back wall of the studio. I've been looking into this Xbox performance issue and I've made so many videos in 2020 and 2021 explaining the express advantage that Xbox Series X had over the PS5 and it really, especially lately, has not come to fruition with big multiplats, some five or six that have recently released that are running much better on the PS5. And then I'm like, hmm, why is that? Why would there be performance issues with better hardware? And I know they're not using all of the new RDNA 2 features, but why wouldn't the raw hardware run better? And I needed to look into what Digital Foundry has to say and what these tech experts and the hardware leads are saying about the Xbox. But I am looking into a bright future where things are going to continue to get better and better as we get out of cross-generation. If you ended up enjoying this video and understood some of the technical babble that much of it even went over my head, let me know by liking and subscribing to the channel. Hit the bell to be notified of new weekly content. And if you want to further support the work we do here on the Cold Eastwood channel, you can hit the join button below and that'll get you into the membership that gets you early access for videos like this and monthly merch giveaways on the channel. But if you want to hear more in-depth discussion, like we'll do very soon about the hardware discussions and what's going on with games in development, you can check out the XSC podcast, which runs every Monday at 5 p.m. with my new co-host, Mag, middle-aged game guy that is going to be my co-host and Gaz is left as he is continuing to work in his career and focus on other things besides staying up till 3 or 3.30 in the morning to hang out with me. But I want to know what you think about Xbox's hardware situation, how you feel the games are on their own. Let me know in the comments section. There will be some fighting. There'll be some arguing as usual. And as I always say, please be nice.